So how do you guys think the gentle jousting launch is going to go? Record breaking <laughs> or, or dick games. What I really hope comes out of this game is that it makes a lot of people laugh. Um, the Volvo's proudest moment. And it makes a lot of people think. Really excited to see what people think of it. A fun, <laughs> intelligent game. Nigel's hardest point in his marriage. <laughs> It doesn't turn out that we were completely wrong in our estimation and we created a monstrosity. The way someone will recommend this game is if they were telling a dick joke anyway <laughs> and then they realized their friend hadn't played general jousting, then they'd recommend it. And I think that's, that's, that's what we can keep on hoping for. Oh, this is, it's weird to say of, of, like a, of a game about a dick that you want it to be a smart game, but that is what I hope. We were supposed to launch at the end of last year, and we were pretty close, but you know, the ending just wasn't finished. The hardest part was probably, for me as a writer, was starting over, throwing away so much work and so much writing to focus in on the core of the story. It wasn't really coming together. We needed like some more writing, we needed some more recording. Just kind of hashing over like what essentially we want like the, the story to be about. The core of how it shifted to being about toxic masculinity and about John trying to improve his life in toxic ways. So the ending was still unsolved, which was very scary um, for like a huge narrative project. We've been like pushing really hard and consistently. And we decided we want to do this like credit montage with a bunch of like still frames that burns through some of the like cheese that we accumulated at the end of the game by being very sentimental and moralizing, I guess. So it kind of goes over the top on the other direction where it's like, be a sensitive man and like learn to sculpt and save kittens from trees and watch Titanic and kind of like makes fun of that a bit. Yeah. It's not flowing as well as I imagined it might. Yeah, it's not as funny as I was hoping. But then we kind of wanted to bring it back again to like end on a, on a serious note. So are we trying to tell a joke of like becoming an over the top sensitive man? Because the beach scene certainly interspersed with it are making, not making that joke work. There isn't a narrated fumble core game with like a full story. It's just unknown territory. I don't know if we're gonna launch on time because that has not been my experience with the Gentle Dusting crew. Is that the new music track by Jay? Like well, Evan and Richard were both keen on the song. They just wanted it to sound slightly different. And like, I, I was also, I'm also like a little bit unsure about it. So tomorrow, press codes are going out to press. Um, so YouTubers, journalists and things will be able to play the single player for the first time, uh, which is very scary. So this is kind of like, I mean, we have a little bit of time between the journalists and the official launch when everyone can play the game to polish it up, but kind of every, everything has to be done by sort of tomorrow. <laughs> This is game test number two. That's not Barbara. So the orange one is supposed to be Barbara. Is that Barbara? Barbara! Okay, this is not going on. Well. There are still some game breaking bugs, but I definitely feel like there are less game breaking bugs than last night. This is what the play test is for. <laughs> There's a bug with asking Barbara out. It wasn't triggering. I'm pretty sure I never changed that. So because it's a linear game, if there's like a bug that breaks progress, like a game breaking bug where players can't continue, that's obviously really bad. I'm quite scared of those kind of bugs. That's the most stressful thing. If we're looking at bugs, yeah. we should look at all of the bugs. <laughs> pages and pages and pages of bugs. So the ones I'm really planning on tackling are these ones that I draw a little skull next to. Those are the game-breaking ones. It's a bit worrying that we keep finding new bugs in every playtest. It's both like good that we're finding them, but also worrying. How many are there that we, that we haven't found yet? Yeah. <laughs> bugs. 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 Bugs.
bugs yesterday. But luckily, we'll be okay because hard, hard, hard work pays off. I hope they appreciate this. And I really enjoy falling off the world a lot. <laughs> <gasps> cool, only two and a half pages of bugs to fix. You can do this. Tonight. I haven't had anyone clamor for this game. Like, I haven't had any friends that just be like, when Zenil Jelson come out? Like, I can't wait to play it. For long periods, we had no idea whether it was, you know, whether it was going to work out, if it was even good. People just like, Look at me with glazed eyes and smile when I say that I'm still working on it. Oh, you know what it is? Because you moved the player to this chair, there was like an area trigger. Yeah, we did that. We changed the way this works and moved John onto the chair so he wasn't triggering this area trigger anymore. That works. Seems like pretty quick resolution. Yeah, for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so the ending is still not quite done. Richard's busy working on the credit sequence. Evan has been working the last couple of days on the, the, the bit just before that, the cooperative bit. We don't want to end up sounding too moralizing, I guess. So we're trying to like undercut that a bit by just being a bit absurd at the end. But they're trying to do that and working hard with Jason to like find a song that like will match the progression. Yeah, I, I like the energy of the, the last drums. This lead should not be on the first bar. This little Yeah, I kind of want to just like... Thursday, it is press launch day. But I think there's one thing we know about, uh, about General Jousting is that we're not afraid of hard work. I think we were supposed to send out press codes like an hour ago. So, uh... I mean, I am, but like no one else who works <laughs> at the company. Yeah, and we're fixing bugs. John was sweating like a senator on a sex day, but he wasn't done and pulled. I can't do it, I can't even move it. Uh -oh. I'm stuck! Could have gone better. We found a lot of broken stuff. Oh uh, yeah, it's not moving on. Hmm. Yesterday I was feeling much better about it. Uh, this is just a, a log file from the last playtest that we did with Shaz. 78,000 line log file. I find a bug. Oh, <laughs> Evan and Richard are still putting the final touches on the, on the ending. Um, some significant final touches, I think. A story about being a toxic man, like how, I mean, that was like our problem with the conclusion. How do you... Maybe if it just ended how, badly. I mean, it did no, in like, some way. As a team of at least four or five people that are like actively working on it every day, you have to try and come to an agreement on what values you want to put in the game. Ideally, I, well, I wanted a story that's about a character's like self-entitlement and like del delusion, right. um, mm. but then, because we ended up having Sam so strongly at the end, it now yeah, feels right. like a story about well, like, their is. friendship. I do think it, it came across in each of the scenes, like when he's working out and traveling and whatever, that he's that he's following these empty things. Yeah, I mean it's definitely there. Yeah, and and that like it's definitely not making him a nice person that's, or helping him find love. That's the key love. difference between his friendship with Sam at the beginning and the end right. is that he is able to ask for help and talk about his his feelings. That co-op ending idea kind of then necessitated a lot of extra story that pushed it in a direction. So yeah. it's, like, it's a consequence of us wanting that thing. The apologize that might help it. You instead of pressing E to apologize, you press B and it takes it down. <laughs> Dying minutes, we have no internet. My computer power went off twice. Oh, um, yeah, it's going well aside from all the things that are going bad. I don't think we could tell the story in another way, in another medium where the characters weren't penises. I think the actual story is good and like should have the life cycle of any story game. Mm. Uh, there's too much work to do. Nigel wants a press bolt now. We're not ready. Is what it is. There's been many times on the project where I've just been like lying in bed, not knowing what to do, feeling like 
it's just like a horrible mistake and no one would want this game. I'm pushing now. So it is Friday the 12th. Um, we were hoping to have the press codes out yesterday at 4 p.m. But unfortunately, the player testing yesterday revealed a bunch of new bugs because you fix one thing, five more things break. Um, but the guys have worked really, really, really hard. The game is super stable. We just did a full playthrough again just now. It's looking really great. There's a few more tweaks. That was like a hundred times better than yesterday's test. Yeah, it didn't break. It didn't break. Yeah. And then I think you guys are going to be ready to send. I wouldn't say super stable. I would just say it worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it didn't break. <laughs> we played it through a few times without it completely breaking. That's, that's, like, that's huge. I, that's the bare minimum for like stability, <laughs> that it can actually be finished. Yeah, so this, this is real hard, so we're 24 hours late on our deadline. It's, I'm impressed, it has not crashed. It's, it's really good. Yes. <laughs> I'm like Thank much, you, much happier. Yes. I'm pretty happy with the final song for the credits. And I think everyone else is, so that's the most important bit. Also, it's got an excellent ending in now, yeah. which it didn't like two days ago. We've forced the code to do a fart wipe at the end, just to end on a fart joke. I was talking about the fart for like apologizing. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Talk, talk. I'm still gonna record that for Olivia just now when she gets back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take your shirt off. I can't get to that area. Okay. Wait, hang on, let me try it. Let me try it. Yeah, uh, 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 uh. Fun fact about the day, the final part was recorded by Olivier farting on Evan Greenwood's stomach. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm so sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, well I'm stuck, I can help. It's my favorite one. I spent a lot of time last <laughs> night choosing the perfect fart noise for this. <laughs> spent a lot of time making that fart sound just for you, Robbie. So then the camera pads up past the bleachers, which is like a scene you've seen multiple times, but never seen behind them, and like there's a big pile of trash which is actually named Robbie's Trash Pile. You can finally have sex in the game. Yes! <laughs> in in, a trash, in Robbie's, Robbie's Trash Heap. Pretty proud of that, it's a good ending. That's a lot, it's quite a, quite a comedic roller coaster. <laughs> Super excited to finally like let people see what we've been working on. Hey, it worked. A little bit stressed about things, but feeling much happier now than I was a couple of days ago, I guess. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, high five. Mm, high five. <laughs> I'm really glad that we're just polishing and improving now and fixing rather than dealing with like unsolved story issues. I'm trying to fly to Australia tomorrow, but I haven't got a visa and the game's not out and I'm just completely a mess, but you know, that's just the way it goes, I guess. I think we're in a good place. I have to test one more build today. Do we have a stable build that's already uploaded and we're just waiting for Nigel? Can I confirm that? Uh, I'm gonna make a new build now. This build is pretty good. Basil found like one thing that really should be changed. Seven minutes, seven dun, dun, dun. minutes for one. Hold uh, on. There's only things I can fix quickly. No! Richard, more trees! Just some, just some more trees. In terms of the project coming to an end, um, I'm, I'm really glad. I'm assuming the fact that Dee hasn't come to tell us anything that she didn't find any bugs in her with this. It's not mm -hmm. I've got a game breaking bug. Oh god. Hi. What is it? So it's where you're fighting the high school bullies. One of the bullies literally disappeared. Could you have gotten knocked through a collider? I thought of something that might fix the problem. Can I push it? Okay, as long as there's no chance of it breaking something else. Yeah, I think there's no chance. From Don't get distracted by me. Oh, Don't be I distracted. Don't. 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 Oh, you're so charming. Stay focused. <laughs> I mean, it's great being the writer because, you know, like once a week I come in and and say, oh, I've done all these cool things. Ah, uh, yes, you know that idea that took you, uh, you know, three days to implement? I already wrote it in five minutes. Time. Stay focused. Aren't you surprised right. that Richard isn't in Australia? Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not Spoiled. ready. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, game break. Stay focused. It'll take me one minute. Okay.
got Is this a minute? You've got three minutes. Don't minutes worry. Or real minutes? We're gonna make a build. Timing. We're gonna make a build. It's not timing. That was one minute, Evan. Um, really? Okay, yeah. I think I need to make a build. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I. Okay, then I'll do act three of the new build. I think Gentle Jousting is going to sell 50,000 copies in its first month out of early access. 100,000. There you go. It'll be down for 250. 100. Uh, 100,000 as well. It'll be on the nose. Um, it's 69,000. 45k. 60,000. I'd say 75,000. Nice to see J Dogs not so pessimistic this time. Uh. I don't know, I feel like not a lot. I didn't want to write, <laughs> didn't want to write it down. Like. 82,075. We're all pretty excited and somewhat in shock that we're actually ready on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, apart from all the deadlines we missed, we're on time. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to come. Out. I mean, to pull out of early access. To pull out. Just the project has been so like creatively fulfilling, and like I've learned so much and grown so much from the experience that like I'm totally satisfied. Remove from early access. Yes. All of this is good. Yes. It's good. <laughs> Like, have you ever just had like a, like a lot to drink and then you get to go to the bathroom and like, ah, oh, the relief. That's how it feels to finally have it out in the world. The most successful dick party game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. there have been dick party games for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> most elaborate dick joke in the world. Oh, yeah. We make good As a whole, the process has been like incredibly rewarding. I've grown a lot as like a game developer and as a person. I'm so proud of everyone. Yay! Honestly, it's the most proud of anything I've made. I think it's going to spark a, like, a really interesting and really, really cool discussion. When I started making dick games like three or four years ago, I was definitely had like a lot of stuff I was trying to explore my own sexuality and my own like, repression. And I've definitely worked through a lot of that stuff by making these games and having all these conversations every day with people. And I'm like, I still want to make penis games, but I'm also like ready to move on to like some new issues of myself to dig up and explore. It's been three months since the launch of General Jousting. Richard did make it to Australia in the end. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's been a while, so we've got some hindsight. Older and wiser. Yeah. I guess I was pretty confident uh, at, the, at the time of launch. I really thought that like this story, this like weird format was really going to sort of like strike a nerve somewhere and like people would like share it and talk about it a lot. And so I was predicting about 100,000 sales, which I knew was optimistic, but I still felt fairly confident. And I think that was sort of towards the top end of our predictions. Mm -hmm. 25 was the lowest. 25,000 was banned. Yeah, the sales, sales came in. Lower than the lowest prediction. Yeah, it was like <laughs> 21,000. The early access launch, I think it did like 30,000 sales in the first month or something. And so we predicted upwards of like twice as successful mm -hmm. as the early access launch, which is historically not how full releases go. Like usually mm -hmm. the full launch is like smaller than the early access launch. So I think we were definitely optimistic there and we were definitely expecting a lot more like virality and like word of mouth and like more surprise people going like, what? It's there's like a Stanley Parable penis game. <laughs> When we launched Broforce, I remember thinking I would have been happy with 10,000. Mm. It was like, if we get 10,000 in its lifetime, we'll pay off this game, we'll be, <laughs> we'll be okay. Feeling a bit bummed at 21,000 yeah. is weird. Yeah. yeah, I think the thing I was most surprised by is still the reception. Day one, wake up, like, check my YouTube and see like what what's out. And there's maybe like one or two YouTube videos every day that week, just waking up, checking, waiting for like a big YouTube video to drop and like nothing coming out. It didn't like blow up on YouTube and that might be because of like new monetization policies. Two weeks before launch, like mm. YouTube 
increased its demonetization policy towards uh, sexual content, which general jousting falls a part of, even though it's not the wrong kind of sexual content, I feel. Those videos get demonetized, and we didn't see big YouTubers picking it up as a result, or very, very few. So the other thing is that the kind of story it is is not communicated very well. The people who want a story about toxic masculinity have no idea that that's what it's about if they mm. see like screenshots or videos. I also think that part of the marketing was to market it not as a game about toxic masculinity and then I think a lot of press coverage had the headline like a game about dicks that tackles toxic masculinity. It which didn't turn people necessarily onto the game who saw toxic masculinity as like a buzzword mm. used by progressives against them. Yeah, I think what I underestimated and couldn't see maybe anymore that comes to the sense is how people have to keep face in their social communities. My work is making dick games, so I don't really have much further down to go. <laughs> um, but if, you, if you're holding like a proper job, you can't really tweet about this penis game. There's a lot of people who are like afraid of being judged for liking and or buying general jousting. Yeah. Like, we see a lot of reviews that are like, Oh, my friend g gifted me this game, I didn't buy it, now here are my thoughts. <laughs> I think the, the some of the negativity or dismissal came from groups that kind of expected maybe more of a power fantasy in a dick game, less of a linear narrative uh, experience. To some extent, I think the core audience, a lot of them aren't people that naturally play games like Gone Home or Firewatch. And we made a story in that sort of genre, even though it was with the physics fumble core and the, the, the dick joke things. I think it was in some ways not, you know, it's a genre mashup that doesn't necessarily make sense in terms of having a market that actually wants that. <laughs> I'm almost surprised at how well we managed to make it. There was a period when it seemed like we were failing mm. and it wasn't coming together. And then it came together super well. I think there's like an accelerating process. Like as things start to put, fit together, mm. you get more psyched and work harder and things fit together more and it kind of finally takes shape. And you're also getting better at it as you go along. And yeah. like there might be that point where you go from actually not being good enough to make this game to being adequate at making the <laughs> game you're busy making. I was surprised how hard and how much work getting a narrative together was, especially in a game sense where all of the narrative needs to be built with interactions. There's so many toys in genital jousting. In the last changer log, there's like a beehive where you can eat the beehive and spit out live bees. <laughs> and there's one beehive in the game, again. <laughs> like a 30 second dream, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of positivity. There are people that did seem to connect, and I think yeah. that's something I'm super happy about. We also got an award at a Maze Festival in Berlin for the story mode, and some of the people who were judges on that award were people we really, whose opinions we really respect. That was one of the things that was important to us, that we didn't want to make a stupid dick game that did harm to the world, and I think we got uh, affirmed that we had made a good thing. So certainly from my perspective, I've been pretty overwhelmed by like the reception to the game. I think like most of the people who played through the story mode, like all the reviews on Steam and things where people are like, they're either surprised that it was as good as it is, or they're surprised that it's like as deep as it is and it's not what they're expected. And there's a lot of people who are like, you know, I, I cried. Um, and that's sort of all I wanted. You know, we were really scared for a long time that like nobody was gonna connect with the thing and that we were wasting our time. But I think that's been like well and truly disproven and like people did relate to it a lot and like get something out of it, which is awesome to see. I think we, we achieved the thing we set out to do. I do wonder whether I would set out to do it had I known that YouTube would have become stricter, had I known that maybe it didn't mesh as well with the people that are already buying the party game. Would we have sold it as a standalone thing maybe? I still know in the back of my head, the idea for the single player wasn't exactly what we ended up doing. There was the, the concept initially to, to do it less linear, more kind of, more playful, more toy box. I don't think that was really possible with our ambitions. I think we tried that and we couldn't do it. And we, we did this as the thing we thought we could do and, and we achieved it. I don't know if it was necessarily a smart financial move or the best financial move we could have made, but it's still like a life-changing experience to, to work on something like this. Honestly, a lot of the time I didn't have faith that we were actually gonna pull it off. 
Um, so like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck with how it turned out yeah. and I don't know if I would like, if we could have done it better. I, if, if we would have done it in a way that maybe amounted to greater financial success, we would have compromised on, on some of our creative ambitions and some of the things we thought were important. Yeah, yeah. but also it's like still a financial success. So it, yeah. I mean, I love making narrative games. Thought I would, I do, but they're fucking hard. So, you know, I don't know what to take out of that. Like, I don't want to do it again, but I love doing it. <laughs> I don't love uh, making games in secret. Uh, don't want to do that again if I can help it. I'd rather have fewer sales, but be happier while making the game. You know, even if it like ruins our marketing attempts by sharing everything as we go, like, fuck it, I'll do that if I don't have to live with the anxiety of not knowing whether people like it or not. I mean, it's a weird thing with General Justin, because I think if we had done that, we would have realized people didn't want it, and then we wouldn't have made it. <laughs> it's like a double-edged sword. <laughs> and now that we've passed it, we're happy we made it, so... Yeah. You know, that would have been a disaster. Well, maybe we would have made something else amazing instead. I think a, a really good space to be in is where you make something that people don't want, but you really want it to exist, <laughs> and you still make a profit. Right. <laughs> like, we can't ask for much more than that. Like, people didn't want it, we made it anyway, we really like it, and we made money. I think we achieved the thing pretty damn well that we set out to do. I mean, based on reviews, based on uh, the, the response, we, we did make a, a cool game that, like, we had no experience in making before, and it resonated, and people actually liked it. Yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of it, still. Yeah. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Mm. The hardest part of gentle jousting. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm no, sorry. It's yeah. too late. It's on. It's on camera. It's on. No, I don't want it to be on camera. I'm going to do. I'm going to fuck with continuity. Ha ha. <laughs> ha ha. Russ. Ha ha. Try editing this. Ha 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 ha. It's happening! Woo! <laughs> <laughs>